When I moved to Arizona, I got this snazzy idea for a journal that was squishy yet sturdy because I have this uh, blank sketchbook that is one of those, um, it's it got really thin covers, but it works because it's thick. And so I came here and I didn't have a sewing machine or anything, and I devised this journal that I was going to use. And I sewed the signatures in, and I really, really loved it. And so I made a bunch um, for Etsy, and then I got a bunch of requests from people saying, I really would love to know how to make one of those. Why don't you teach it? So I am going to teach the button journal, and I have some examples right here in my lap. This was one of example of one, and this one's bound with rope elastic so that you can actually refill it and you can learn how to do that with the eyelets. This is my personal current journal, and this one has bookboard in the cover and no squishiness on it. It's just solid, covered with canvas. And for this workshop, this is actually the exact journal that you're going to be making. And it's really squishy, and it's got beads and charms on it, and elastic and a button. And when you open it, it's got a pocket in a different color that you can put stuff in. Another variation that you'll have, you have a lot of options in this one. You can put a pen loop on here, you can try different types of bindings. You really have a lot of control over what kind of journal that you want to make that would work best for you. And this one is just fun. I mean, just holding it in your hands, it's just like a little pillow for your secrets. You have a pen loop for your pen if you want. You can freestyle stitch on the cover if you want, like this one. And you can also, since it's actual canvas, paint on the cover anything you want. You can make the internal be, you know, make this um, a quilted internal place. You can use whatever kind of paper you want. You can use found papers or, you know, art papers or whatever. Any kind of stuff that you have in your house. Now, in the tutorial itself, I actually use a sewing machine, but if you don't have one, it's actually really easy to make. The sewing machine is basically used to sew the lining together, so you're just doing a straight stitch all around, to hem up the back, which is a straight stitch, and to attach the pocket, which is a straight stitch. And in fact, the first one that I made, personally, I didn't use a sewing machine at all, and it's still held together. And I don't have it because I've submitted it for stuff, but it's all held together except for I bound it with the uh, same sewing thread that I used to sew it together and the signatures actually came out. So you want to get some wax linen and I tell you where you can find some inexpensively if you don't have any. But basically you can use fabric scraps from your studio or your house. You can use button strap scraps. You don't, you can, if you know how to straight stitch with just a needle and thread you can make it. And what's great is it's such a fun journal to hold and to play in and to work in to decorate and to make your own and it's not going to take you more than if you sat down from start to finish it won't take you more than two hours to make and that's like i'm saying that for people who are really inexperienced with sewing you're going to get a pdf with all the instructions in it as well you're going to get a supply list you're going to get you know like illustrations in your pdf that match up with the videos and there are four videos that cover everything. The first one is all about creating signatures, so if you don't know how to make your own signatures, you can totally learn in that and cutting down covers. The second video is going to be prepping everything for sewing, how you measure, how you figure it out. There isn't a set pattern, so you can make your journal any size that you want, and it's going to show you how to do the measurements for that. Sewing in pockets. The third video is, is all about adding the stuffing in, because that's what took me the, the longest to figure out adding the stuffing in, sewing up the back, and putting on the elastic. And then the final video is all about the binding. Um, you're going to learn how to do this kind of binding in it, but I do have instructions in the PDF for if you do want to do the eyelets and the, the rope elastic. But the final one is all about the binding, all about embellishing your binding and attaching the button to the front. And then you can just go crazy on it and you can gesso the cover or you can, I mean, because it's squishy, as I like to call it, you can get your needle under it if you want to add any embellishments or whatever, or you can just paint on it and put a bunch of beads on the bottom. And the great thing is, this one is just finished recently, and this one is about a week old. And you can see that after a little while, the paper inside actually kind of calms down and becomes flat, so it'll stay. So you just have to give it some time to kind of adjust. But it's just a really fun journal and when you do it with your own supplies and your own hands it's really inexpensive as well so it's an inexpensive fun craft 
that you can do and make. You can make it refillable or not refillable. I like making a new one every time I fill one up because they're just so much fun for me. And just do it. It's, I've tried to make everything really easy to understand. I've tried to give you so many options to make this a personalized piece that you can add into your collection and work in. So it's a mini workshop because it's just from start to finish. Have fun and learn something new and learn a new binding style and get going and I really hope to see you there.